So uh, you've heard us uh, discuss organizations and discuss science. What we haven't discussed is the nuts and bolts infrastructure, which supports those organizations and those science. So I'll just give you uh, an overview of some of the things that we've been developing over, over 20 years. I mentioned yesterday the Healthy Brains for Healthy Lives initiative. Um, the most important aspect of, of that program is it's 240 PIs and 1,000 highly qualified personnel all trying to work together. So that by itself uh, means that we have significant informatics challenges. For this program, we developed so-called NeuroHub, and I will talk a little bit today about uh, some of the elements of NeuroHub, <coughs> principally on the right, let's see if this, uh, this works. Yeah, principally we have the, the Loris uh, databasing environment and the C-Brain high performance computing portal, but there are other elements which I will make mention to in terms of uh, open publication. All right, so starting off. Well, Loris has been around quite a long time of continuous evolution. What it does is allows us to, to capture multimodal imaging information, genetics and epigenetics, certainly not the entirety of raw data, but uh, SNPs and CNVs and all of that information, which is typically used to combine with the phenotypic information. Then we all have, we have uh, over 900 behavioral instruments which have been coded and, and uh, uh, various uh, GUIs which allow us to uh, develop new behavioral instruments. More laterally, we've added in biospecimen information. I will talk a little bit about how we support uh, um, biospecimen tissue sampling and storage and electrophysiology. So you've got a set of different modalities of, of uh, genotype and, and uh, phenotype. On the right, you have the whole C-Brain environment, which is essentially uh, a portal to high-performance computing or cloud services, which allow us to take the data from the Loris environment and process it within a C-Brain environment, then put the results back into the, into the Loris environment. As a, as a worked example, uh, we'd taken the entirety of the UK Biobank data set of 500,000 subjects, and uh, we've uh, installed all of that and made it available to about 240 PIs. This, it's, it's interesting that uh, this was the first time that the UK Biobank folks ag uh, agreed to dis disseminate the totality of the UK Biobank. Up until that point, about five years ago, they were disseminating the data on a hypothesis-driven subset basis. And then I guess we just happened to catch them at the right time when they realized that that model wouldn't scale to the large number of people around the world who all wanted access to the UK Biobank. Indeed, within an institution, there might be dozens of investigators who all wanted access to different subsets. And this was obviously not going to scale when what you really needed was access for one institution to the totality. So uh, we were the first uh, site that they, they uh, tried, they agreed to do this on. Now, of course, they're doing it with other sites around the world. As I said, C-Brain is, a, is a, a, a portal to the high performance computing initially of uh, the, the uh, Canadian landscape of uh, supercomputing infrastructure and cloud services, but more, more latterly, um, exceed data sites across the US, um, eBrains, Surfsera in, in, in uh, the Netherlands, so people can load their workflows um, and run on any of these infrastructures, depending on which is most appropriate. The whole point of this is to make, take away the complexity of supercomputing and high performance computing from your average neuroscientist who doesn't know and doesn't care about the details. They just want to press the button and make it go. So this, this is uh, essentially a way to, to take all of that, away, that pain away from the average neuroscience investigator. C-Brain is, uh, this slide is a little bit out of date. It's up to about 1,800 users now around the world in 32 countries. 
In broad terms, there are about 120 uh, tools which are available on Seabrain. Um, initially, uh, mostly oriented towards image analysis of various kinds, structural MRI, functional MRI, tractography, PET. Uh, but more, more latterly, we're incorporating genomics and transcriptomics workflows. All of these are contain containerized and then made available through the so-called boutiques uh, uh, environment, which uh, again simplifies the standardization and access and, and, and launching of particular complex workflows. In a little bit more detail, I, I draw your attention to the top right where increasingly added in things like Cell Ranger and the methylization, methylization pipeline, sCRNA box, and various transcriptomics and genomics workflows. And this essentially makes the same, the same point that uh, uh, this is a, a, an area of uh, considerable interest at, at McGill where we have a single cell transcriptomics initiative and nine new investigators have been hired. They all want this kind of infrastructure to support their single cell analytics. You can read about uh, these various uh, workflows and uh, platforms and a variety of publications and open documented code repositories. As I mentioned yesterday, this, uh, this environment has also been commercialized in the last couple of years. And this has been uh, adopted by NIH. And I, I will spend a little bit of time just mentioning this. At the bottom line, Lasso is the only identified vendor that has the capability and experience to manage and release file-based behavioral and neuroimaging data from multiple large-scale studies involving different assessment domains. This is a significant uh, step where you, the US government is contracted to essentially a startup company in Canada to uh, uh, make use of this infrastructure. It speaks to the fact that the US has been uh, spent 20 years or so with a series of false starts for its data dissemination, aggregation, curation, and, and uh, analytics. So you'll see more about this in time, as time goes on. This infrastructure that I just described supports a, a, a variety of different uh, networks within Canada to start off with, um, most notably Healthy Brains for Healthy Lives, which we've talked about, the Canadian Consortium on Neurodegeneration and Aging, for US folks in the audience, this is essentially the Canadian equivalent of, of ADNI. It's the, more or less the same size. And I'll talk about a couple of other of these, uh, these uh, uh, initiatives in a moment. The Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform, as an example, um, is designed to disseminate tools, analytic tools on Seabrain and uh, various open data resources. And at this point, there are about 100 different uh, data sets and about 75 to 80 different workflows which are immediately available through there. A relatively recent uh, addition to, to this ecosystem is the newly uh, reproducible preprints for open publishing. Uh, this, this is essentially part of the, the, the growing movement to have uh, editable, not PDFs, but editable Public, publicable, Jupyter Notebooks mediated uh, 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 preprints which, where people can analyze the data themselves and see if they get the same results as the authors publish themselves. This is a, a revolution in how scientific communication is proceeding. There will actually be, uh, later on this month, there will be a launch of the whole New Libre environment uh, with a, a series of uh, international uh, publication houses attending. So this is something you can look into in much greater detail on the Neurolibre website. It supports uh, a national environment for electrophysiology. I won't go into great detail on this, except to say that uh, it's the same sort of thing. Data storage analytics of EEG, EEG data. CBIG, I think, is, is particularly relevant to uh, some of the people in this audience. This is uh, the Clinical Biospecimen Imaging Genetics Repository. It's, uh, it's, it's essentially to make av available uh, cell lines and tissue samples to the scientific community. At this point, uh, it, it's storing the blood and derived products, uh, PBMCs, iPSCs, 
uh, any of the biospecimens that you see here. All of that is made available. And at this point, there are about 80,000 samples from about 4,000 patients, uh, largely with Parkinson's disease, ALS, neuromuscular disease, multiple sclerosis, and about 160 patient-derived IPSC lines, which are available. This is mediating collaborations in about 100 uh, different institutions in the academic and industrial world. On the international scene, I've already mentioned the UK Biobank and the ABCD and HBCD. It supports highball. Yeah, of course, we've been talking about that already, so I will not uh, dwell on this. You've seen this. But perhaps most importantly, what, what we have not talked about in great detail so far is the integration of these infrastructures in North America and in Europe. You've heard Katrin and some others uh, talk about uh, eBrains, the Phoenix environment, the European High Performance Computing Joint undertaking in the European scene. The equivalent of that in the North American <coughs> scene uh, uh, is LORIS, the Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform, CBrain. And what we've been developing within Highball is the transparency between these two universes. When we started this out within the Highball project three or four years ago, we had a lot of infrastructure on both sides of the Atlantic, but they had different tool sets and security protocols, incompatible data metadata standards, non-interoperable HPC environments. And in work package four of Highball, we've essentially dealt with that where we now have harmonization and authorization to enable Seabrain portal access to uh, data sets in, in uh, Eulish and uh, other uh, European sites, transfer applications and tools to the data so that the data can be analyzed in situ, it doesn't have to be transferred, and interoperable HPC systems and authorization. So essentially that's what this schematic is showing, that uh, via the, the uh, Seabrain containerization and JSON resource, and boutiques descriptors, we can get access to the Alliance HPC sites across Canada using a, a data lab environment. You can also use data lab uh, to get access to eBrains data, to open neuro data across the US, uh, of course, the CONP across Canada, and across the, uh, uh, the, the Eulish supercomputing environment. So all of that is available to the highball community in a essentially transparent manner. And just to make that point further, what you're looking at here is the access to a series of data sets within the COMP environment, but also you can go, you can go on to Open Neuro in the US. You can get access to uh, analytics via Seabrain, and you can launch any of those workflows I've just been describing onto uh, US data sets. And as I've just pointed out, in, only in the last uh, couple of months have we being able to uh, uh, build that transparency with the eBrains environment. I think this is an important step forward for transatlantic interoperability. So this again, I've put up for uh, Crystal's benefit. She hates me putting up all these logos. <laughs> but the, the, essential, the essential point here is that uh, the, the Loris and Seabrain environments are underpinning all of these infrastructures. And another one, just for you, Crystal. I, I, well, I'm putting it up for your benefit. Anyway, that's all I, I want to say. But I, the, perhaps one of the points that's already come up in the last two days of discussion is that we have with different data, data basing informatics and environments where the search, the principal search dimension is patient, brain region, cell type, and it's not clear how all of those different layers of, of organization can be brought into a, a common searchable framework. And I think this is something that, we're, that we have to, to worry about. Is how, how are we going to do this? And there's so many different approaches have been developed at different sites across the world. And it's not a, a, at all clear yet how we are going to integrate all of these in a way which is searchable and relatively painfully, painlessly so. So with that, I think uh, we have an hour panel discussion to, to contemplate and discuss exactly these issues. Thank you very much, everyone.